Israel's first mission to land on the moon is continuing nominally, despite an early glitch with the spacecraft's navigation system. The issue caused an involuntary reboot and delayed a planned four-minute engine burn by two days. Mission managers with Space IL say all systems are operating nominally and the mission is continuing as planned. Hi, uh, Jonathan from Team Space IL here. I'm standing in Israel and I'm really excited to tell you all about the important maneuver that we just had and why was it so difficult. So, we launched the spacecraft into orbit and uh, we, share, we shared a ride with another satellite. So that means we're not in a trajectory to the moon yet. We have to do orbit correction maneuvers in order to get to the moon. And this is something we expected long time ago. Uh, the problem with making orbit correction maneuvers is because uh, uh, we had some sort of an issue with the Star Trekker, and that was not trivial that we can actually do this. And that was a huge success. And I want to take you back and tell you about why it was difficult and what's so hard about it. So first, a Star Trekker is a type of a camera just like the one you have on your phone. And uh, it takes pictures of the stars, and this is how we know where we're aiming, where the engine goes, and where should we fire. The problem is, like cameras, if you shoot them towards the sun, they get blinded. So we have some sort of a visor that's supposed to help it from happening, but some, something went wrong, we're still not sure why, and we get blinded in angles that we did not expect. So the sophisticated engineers in the team uh, worked actually all night to try to figure out an angle or configuration that will make it all work and we can actually make the maneuvers because if the Star Trekker is blind, we don't know where the engine is aiming and there's a real risk of losing the spacecraft. So they worked all night and uh, they uploaded a command. I was talking to the engineer, uh, Lior, and she was about to upload the command. And, you know, I asked her, like, what does she feel? And she told me, you know, it's uh, not, not a big deal. We practice it a lot. But still, there was a lot of tension in the control room, and we all waited for this critical moment, and that was a huge success. And the, and the maneuver was corrected uh, very nicely, and we're now in orbit. There are going to be another correction maneuver that's going to be 10 times longer, so it's actually a lot more risk, so we're still holding our fingers for a successful maneuver correction. Thank you so much. If successful, Israel will become only the fourth nation on Earth after the Soviet Union, the United States and China to undertake the 384,000 kilometer journey to land on the lunar surface. The mission also comes 50 years after America's historic Apollo 11 lunar lander, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon. Israel's Genesis lunar lander blasted into orbit on February the 22nd aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The 585-kilogram Genesis, or bear sheet in Hebrew, was successfully deployed into orbit 35 minutes after launch, igniting its own onboard rocket engines for the first of several times to progressively increase its orbital apogee, or furthest distance from the Earth, until the orbit is so large it also encompasses the Moon. Using this process known as orbital raising instead of a more direct lunar transfer maneuver has become the preferred method of reaching the Moon for robotic missions which aren't time-sensitive. That's because it uses less fuel, but of course, as I said, it's not time-sensitive. It takes about seven weeks rather than just three days. Once it gets there, the spacecraft will undertake a lunar orbit insertion maneuver, eventually going into orbit around the Moon for up to a month before landing on the Mare Serenitatis, or Sea of Serenity, a 674-kilometer-wide dark basaltic lunar basin just east of the Mare Imbrium. Once on the lunar surface, Genesis will send back video and images and use its magnetometer to study the lunar magnetic field to help scientists better understand how the moon formed and evolved. It'll also deploy a laser retroreflector array on the lunar surface for NASA as part of a new lunar-based navigation system. It's hoped NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter will be in position to document the spacecraft's descent and landing on the moon's surface. And NASA's Deep Space Communications Network is providing telemetry and communications for mission managers in Tel Aviv. As well as its primary scientific payload, Genesis is also carrying a digital time capsule known as the Arch Lunar Library, which contains over 30 million pages of data, millions of documents from around the world, including dictionaries and encyclopedias, a full copy of the English language Wikipedia, a copy of the Judeo-Christian Bible, examples of fine literature and art, as well as children's drawings, memories of a Holocaust survivor, Israel's national anthem, the Hatikva, an Israeli flag, and a copy of the Israeli Declaration of independence.